The Western Balkans are in a kind of a limbo on the one hand in terms of uh, their political situations, um, their stagnation and even backsliding uh, in some of the countries. Um, there was the five-year enlargement freeze uh, that uh, was uh, uh, as a cold shower uh, to many of them. Um, at the same time, there is quite a progress uh, on things like Serbia-Kosovo dialogue, um, on uh, the political crisis in Macedonia, um, on the SA with Bosnia, all of those uh, led by, uh, by the EU. Um, so in a way, it's a, it's a glass a half full, half empty. My question is, what uh, can you do um, to basically get back to, uh, to um, its leverage, uh, to its full leverage uh, um, on the Balkans, uh, to um, having the credibility and the transformative power uh, that we uh, used to know. Uh, maybe there is something that we want that is, uh, needs to be done on the process uh, of the enlargement itself. Uh, and, and how would uh, also, um, how would the EU want to address the political challenges in the region? Is the EU capable of doing that? Ms. Mugherini. Thanks. That's a question. First of all, thanks for uh, inviting me and thanks all of you for coming. Uh, I'm sure that I will learn a lot from the questions themselves uh, and uh, that will be very interesting. Uh, this first question actually contains many uh, questions uh, in itself. I'll try to answer. First of all, uh, I don't think the glass uh, metaphor is the appropriate one uh, because it's not a glass. A glass is static uh, by definition. This is a process which is moving very much even when it doesn't look like moving. Uh, it is moving. Uh, and. I believe the European Union uh, not only can, but uh, is uh, exercising its full uh, leverage. Uh, credibility is something that I would, might comment uh, in a moment. But uh, uh, what I see is that uh, uh, in the three uh, countries you mentioned, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and on the process of Serbia-Kosovo dialogue, uh, it's EU-driven, uh, it's uh, uh, moving forward. In the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina, even if we have serious uh, concerns, as we write in papers, uh, in these days, uh, still it's moving in an incredible way compared to the last years. Um, and it is out of a full uh, and full-time engagement from the European Union. This brings me to say uh, that uh, we have to overcome this uh, uh, narrative of the five years enlargement freeze. Uh, I just shared this with the, uh, with the group of members of parliament uh, half an hour ago that found the time even in the middle of the battle to focus on foreign policy and the European foreign policy. Uh, my way of saying this is that we have to work for the next, now it's four years and a few months, to make sure that four years and few months plus one day from now, we have countries that are ready. If you turn it that way, you see how much we have to work and that it is not a matter of freezing, it's a matter of proceeding in a process, which requires all of us to work in that direction. Uh, if, if we define the target in this way, having at the end of the five years of this commission, countries ready, then you see how huge the challenge is, but also how huge the political determination is. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister Mitov, uh, maybe the Bulgarian uh, stake in this. Well, first, what is the Bulgarian horse in, in this? Uh, first, Vessel, I'm, I'm really happy and grateful to be here uh, first uh, and second. I'm really happy that there are no speeches. Today I almost managed to kill a whole 
uh, audience in, with a 25-minute speech. All your ambassadors at once. Uh, indeed, <laughs> indeed. I was, in the end, I was afraid we we're going to lose them. The dream of any foreign minister. Right. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I asked one of my dear friends um, how, w what to do and how to sound in, in these speeches. And uh, he answered in a very whimsical way, don't sound too intellectual, try not to sound too funny, too sophisticated, just be yourself. Uh, <laughs> so I'll try to do that uh, here because uh, the, first, the first part of the day was quite, quite formal uh, and here among friends we can say quite more. Um, so first, it is, it is absolutely clear that uh, Bulgaria is looking forward to, uh, to the accession of the countries in the Western Balkans uh, in the European Union. The European Union will not be entire, will not be whole, will not be complete without, uh, without our neighbors and friends uh, as members of the European Union. Of course, there's a long road to, uh, to, to walk. Uh, we have gone through that. We know how difficult it is. We know how, um, how painful it could be sometimes when it comes to heavy and unpopular reforms. Um, but, however, uh, we need to continue motivating uh, our, our neighbors and friends, even if this, this five-year uh, period um, is determined somehow without, uh, as a period without enlargement. But anyway, um, what needs to be done is clear. The conditionality is, is clear. Uh, it is clear that some of the countries along the road could be motivated and uh, somehow rewarded for their efforts. There are instruments for that. Um, the, different, the different friends and, and neighbors are in different stages of their reform process and in, in their uh, path towards European integration. Um, but we need to keep the process alive. Um, we've spoken uh, about that in the very beginning with Federica when it comes to our presence in, um, in, in all the countries of the Western Balkans, more uh, presence from the European Commission, more presence from um, us, member states, um, more help whenever it comes to expertise, whenever it comes to uh, common projects. We need to use the regional formats. For example, um, Bulgaria just took the chairmanship in office of, of SECP. That is an important instrument to use when it comes to regional cooperation. Because there, we, we have countries, members of the European Union and those who are not, uh, together discussing issues of uh, importance which are important not only for, for the European Union members but also for everyone else. And we are discussing it with the instruments of the European Union. We're discussing it with the philosophy uh, which comes from the European Commission and, and the Council. Um, so that is, that is another point. For us, uh, of course, one of the crucial points would be the good neighborly relations. Um, that is, and, and that needs to be perceived not only as, um, as a bilateral issue or, or bilateral um, engagement, but that is a matter of European importance. In order to move the integration process forward, good neighborly relations are a key, uh, key component of it. Um, I will, I will of course um, stop here and try not to uh, not to extend uh, this, these initial words uh, furthermore. I'm pretty sure that we'll have questions and opinions later, and we can continue. <laughs>